Welcome back to the Desert Green Pearl Barnfind Audi TT restoration project. This is the replacement engine. So what I'm going to do here is I'll strip it back. First off, I'll do the electricals, take all of those off, and then I'll get all the coolant, um, coolant plumbing off and then take off anything else that I need in order to take the head off because some max speeding rods are going to be put into this engine. Okay, so this is ECU plug. So normally that would go up into the rain tray, but this is going to be all spare. Now I've got to prepare the 1.8T block by stripping all of the components. Removing the wiring loom is pretty straightforward, but I find mine's been chopped, which is not so great. If you'd like to see where this project started, you can click on the link in the top right hand to see the origins of this barn find Audi TT. When unplugging the injectors, the fasteners can ping away. Ensure you keep track of them and use your hand to cover them from flying off. When they're all undone, the injector plugs can be lifted up and the plastic holder can be lifted from the fuel rail. The plug for one of the knock sensors is also in this section of the loom, which can be reached from underneath the inlet manifold and its wires are fed back up, which allows the rest of the loom to be fed through the coolant hoses. sensor and the VVT plugs. Once those were off, I was able to feed the engine loom through and remove it completely. Great. Now it's time to remove the inlet manifold. Having a rattle gun makes things way faster, but at the same time can also strip bolts in a matter of seconds. So you need to be really careful. You need to make sure the socket head is seated all the way and square if you are using a rattle gun. Some of the 10 mil nuts are in a funny spot as well. So you can access them from either above or below the fuel rail to get square right on the nuts or on the bolts. Once they're all removed, the inlet manifold can be lifted up with the ejectors and rail attached. Just to keep organised, I quickly pop the nuts and bolts back into place. And of course, the oil dipstick tube is busted, <laughs> a typical thing to find on the 1.8T. Paying attention to the opposite side of the head now where I remove the exhaust manifold. This has 12 mil nuts. Again, using a rattle gun makes life way easier and reduces the chances of rounding out the nut heads or snapping the studs. Now I thought that using an extension with my impact socket would help get the top nuts out easier, but it didn't make any difference at all. However, I am glad they all came out very easily as these can be really difficult to fix, especially if the studs snap. 
Now we're looking at the front of the engine and the engine bracket needs removing to access the timing gear covers. The top one is plastic and just clicks off to reveal the timing belt. I need to set the timing now so I'm removing the coil packs and spark plugs so I can crank or turn the engine by hand easier than if the spark plugs were installed. Using the old dipstick in cylinder one, I can watch it rise and fall to determine where top dead center is and double check where the marks on the timing belt side are. Okay, so that looks good there. You can see I did have to fine tune the position a little bit going up and down in little steps at the end. Now the top marks can be easily seen. The vibration dampener pulley mark, however, is easy to see, but it's reference, which is like a little depression on the lower metal timing cover, is not so easily seen here, but it's usually more obvious and you can also feel it with your finger. Removing the vibration dampener pulley with a rattle gun is the quickest way, otherwise you'll need a counter hold tool so as not to spin the crank, and once the pulley is removed, the rest of the timing belt covers can also be removed where you'll see more timing marks. So here is the bottom timing chain cover mark where you can just make it out. See how it aligns with the lower crank sprocket which has already been marked by someone else before. So here's everything removed so far. The rest of the components like the alternator, aircon or power steering will need to be transferred from the original engine. Now that everything's off, let's have a quick walk around the replacement block. And you can see just how dirty it is. Alright, so that's looking really good. I'm really happy with the progress that I've made. Have stripped down that uh, old block, not old, but the replacement block because what I'm going to do now is give it a bit of a clean. It definitely needs some degreaser and a rinse and then I'm going to take the head off to then be able to replace the rods with upgraded ones and of course do the bearings as well. After a quick blast with some degreaser and the pressure washer, it really helps to get most of the built up gunk off from over the years. With the long block nice and clean, it's ready to get opened up for some upgrades. Thanks for following the Barn Find Desert Green Pearl Audi TT's restoration. To see all of the progress, click into the playlist, hit the notification bell for the next update, and hope this video helps you should you be restoring yours too. All TTs deserve this much love. See you at the next update.